going on for 20 seasons and still having this much hype is nothing short of legendary. Well, it's a reality for CBS's NCIS, and they've cranked the heat up for their upcoming season, the very first episode's a huge crossover event, and it's about the most suspenseful case as of yet. High-speed chase, adrenaline, the whole thing. In this video, we'll be telling you all we know about this crazy premiere. First off, it's with NCIS Hawaii. Between waiting so long for the second season of Hawaii and the 20th for the flagship, fans are pent up with anticipation. This news definitely makes the wait even more worthwhile, especially since the release is just a month away now. The team was keeping their lips shut for a really long time, actually. Scott Gemmell even told TV Insider that a crossover seemed unlikely in terms of logistics. The way he said it was that joining two shows for an episode would be like leaving the others out. It's a bit hard to navigate. At the time, we understood, but hey, guess like they had something else in the works. And now we all know. This is the second crossover since Wilmer Valderrama and Katrina Law went out in the Hawaiian sunshine. Back then, it was just two actors making an appearance. But the list for this one is much longer. They're diving in deep, baby. Valderrama and Law have been on before, so we already know they'll mesh in familiarly. We'll get to see so many exciting introductions. Imagine McGee and Torres interacting. So everything we know about the plot. The DC team has to fly out to the tropical island, and it's a race against time. The prime suspect is one that's probably the hardest to pin down. His name's The Raven, for one. He's been the most elusive criminal, and the military is involved. We don't know exact specifics of the latest crimes he's committed, but we do know time is of utmost importance. The Raven's about to tack the rim of Pacific exercises, so he's a national threat. As we know, Agent Parker and Vivian are on the run. Their storyline is going to be explored a lot in this premiere, too, while Malik and Tennant are already on the island for a global military exercise. On top of that, we'll be seeing Brian Dietzen and Diana Reasonover. The last time the two shows merged paths, Dietzen said that he'd be really stoked to be part of something like it. Your dreams and ours came true, Brian. Plus, Tennant joins forces with Agents Torres and Knight, and the three make their way to Oahu. It'll be extremely fun to see how their dynamic's gonna play out. The tensions are high, and we might even see some drama on the side. Hey, it's not an easy job saving the nation from a terrorist attack. It's a pretty big deal. Every lead they had before this was a dead end, but in Oahu, they find out the Ravens planning to take a lot of lives. And now, about the official pictures of the episode. There's more to feast on, folks. CBS recently broke the news and sprinkled in a few images for good measure. Just a little extra treat for the fans. We've got the standard picture of the two teams in an office surrounded by desktops. It's the duo pictures that stand out, really. In one of them, there's Agent Torres and Tennant giving their best glare. You all know what glare we're talking about. It's pretty much in the job description, isn't it? You gotta detect the slightest hint of suspicion and lead from there. They've got their sus faces on, and it's mesmerizing to see. Vanessa Lachey is giving an amazing raised eyebrow. Absolutely slayed us with this one. Another fire picture shows Lachey and Jessica Law staring down in their NC CIS vests. Seems like Tennant's the binding glue of this episode, which makes sense. She knows how things are done over in Hawaii. She's got a job to do, y'all. Both their hands are at their guns, so we can expect something big to go down there. Perhaps it's a snap of a scene just before things get blown up. They're killing it either way. The last one is a little more light. Let's not forget, this show's got kick-ass comedy. A crossover only means we'll get even more hilarious moments. Sean Murray gets to be a part of the fun, as he's shown meeting his Hawaiian counterparts in an office. He's grinning and shaking hands with some official it's bright, it's sunny, but we're not sure we'll see McGee rocking a pair of sunnies on the beach because Murray isn't listed as a spin-off guest. Well, he's in the photos, so we'll definitely get to see him. Though we don't see Agent Parker in any of the pics, we'll see him on the screen for sure. His name's in the guest star list. That being said, we aren't sure what his arc is. Did he take a trip with Vivian on the lam? Or did things clear up enough for him to go back to DC? Guess we'll only find out in September. You can catch the crossover episode on the 19th of September, and the wait is almost over. Oh, and did we mentioned this is a two-hour special? Well, it's the perfect icing on the cake. In next to no time, we'll get the kickback for a night of absolute insanity. Now, for other NCIS news you might have missed out on. Firstly, Vanessa Lachey talks about her kids seeing her act. Being the first female lead in an NCIS show is a big deal for representation, and Vanessa recognizes that entirely. It's a huge step for inclusivity, and it's so important in ways we fail to realize. The actress sat down with Insider to talk about what her role means to her, and she revealed a touching incident that just melted our hearts. She starts off with the first time her children saw her on television playing Agent Tennant. She said her daughter looked up at her like she was Wonder Woman, which is the sweetest thing any mom can experience. Lachey goes on to say that she imagines all the other little boys and girls around the world. Looking up at the screen and seeing someone who looks like you are is rare for a lot of people, but it shouldn't be. The fact that she might be that person for these kids is absolutely groundbreaking. Imagine being an actress and having such a positive impact on the youth. Granted, NCIS really isn't a show 
show for kids, but when you see minorities in lead roles more, that definitely gets the ball spinning and allows for more exposure for other actors as well. It's a step towards something bigger, and we can only hope it gets better from here on out. How can it not, when Agent Tennant is the most badass lead ever? Next, Caleb Castile confirms return of a key set location. One thing about The Phantom is that we always have a premiere to look forward to. In this case, it's the 14th season of NCIS Los Angeles. It can't come sooner, y'all. But don't worry, filming is well underway. Castile, who plays Devin Roundtree, posted some Instagram stories recently that gave a peek into set life. It's a pretty iconic location. The moment you see it, you'll recognize it. It's none other than the boat shed. If you're an intense fan, you know how important this location is to the show. It's where the most intense interrogations have happened. Caleb makes it clear that the shed ain't going anywhere. He records a video scan of the entire set. Boat shed days be the best days, he captioned it. Caleb, we're with you on that. That in mind, we don't have a whole lot of info about the plot yet. With his sweet sneak peek, we can guess that there's going to be some serious back and forth. Interrogation scenes and the adrenaline they pack are just another type of vibe. All we can do is wait for the casting list of the antagonists. Lastly, Mark Harmon opens up about his departure from the show. While it's true that we won't know the full extent of what happened behind the scenes, it was still a little messy. Of course, both Perrette and Harmon had their reasons for stepping away from the show, but only recently did we get some comment from Harmon about his departure from the show. He revealed some of his thoughts in a special featurette on the DVD version of the 19th season. This is your sign to invest in DVD sets, y'all. There's so much exclusive content you can access. Anyway, Mark said that what always drew him in was playing his roles in a fresh way. By then, he felt that the direction Gibbs took was honest. It made sense to him plot-wise. There wasn't any piece to be made, per se. He was already satisfied with Gibbs' arc. He also said that as far as he's concerned, he's not retired from NCIS. Leroy is still alive and active in Alaska, and so is he. Plus, Harmon's very much involved behind the scenes as a producer in some episodes. He's part of the family forever. Well, that's all for this video. What do you think of the huge crossover between NCIS and NCIS Hawaii? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. See you in the next video.